Hello, everyone. I am Teresa from Teresa's Silhouette Spot for All Things Art, where I love sharing art from my heart. I am going to be painting today with some um, folk art enamel paints on wine glasses. So I'll show you guys how to do um, a one stroke leaf and some sunflowers. That back there, that side, is a big sunflower. That was done with a large brush. But um, sunflowers, if you're blending your colors and you have a, a few different yellows, they're kind of, I don't want to say simple, but they're easy to learn and master for yourself. And you can put sunflowers on all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to switch my camera. Um, I'm also going to get up my phone so I can see comments. Put up my apron. See if I can see comments on my phone. And we will get started. So I'm sorry I'm a few minutes late. I was watching Barbara's album. And how cool was that? So... I'm not a paper crafter. I did last week go to a retreat where we did some paper crafting, but I'm not a paper crafter, but um, I love it. So anyway, when we get started, the first thing I'm gonna do, this is regular old um, isopropyl rubbing alcohol from the grocery store, from the pharmacy, from wherever. And I'm just going to, some. oh, it's in the inside, clean my glass with this alcohol. You don't want the oils from your fingers or dust or anything on your glassware that you are painting. So you can get um, glasses at the Dollar Tree. Hello, nice to see you. When you hop on, tell me where you're from. So you can get glasses all shapes and sizes at the Dollar Tree. Sometimes, I think these wine glasses were from Target. That's the box I took them out of in my stash in the basement because you know us crafters have all kinds of, hey Cheryl, crafty stuff laying around. Oh, let's make a project. Let me just whip out some supplies and a glue gun and we're good to go. It's raining, right? So, anyway, I am a one-stroke decorative painter. I was certified about six years ago. I love to paint. I will paint on anything that stands still long enough. And, um, hi from Redding, California. Oh, it's early there, right? What time is it? Oh, I guess it's not that early. It's a 10, 11, 12, 1. Yeah, okay. Um, I will paint on anything. I'll tell people I'll paint on anything if it stands still long enough. We always pass, we'll pass stuff on the road and I'll be like, oh, and my husband's like, no, I'm not picking up more garbage for you to paint. So I'm actually being able to see comments, so I may not need my phone. So anyway, so we're gonna start with this glass. Let me put something down underneath so you can see better. I use this paper, I guess that'll work. I put out this piece of paper sometimes, so you guys, when I'm doing glass. Now I'm showing you guys on glass because glass is very forgiving. So if you have something on here you don't like, and I'm sure I'll be able to show you. Hey Deborah. Um, I'm sure I'll be able to show you if you have something on glass that you don't like, you want to do it different, you didn't love that stroke, you just take your paper towel and wipe it off and I'm sure I will get to show you how that works. So I also use, where are my, oh my brushes. I use these brushes, they're glass brushes. Um, you don't have to. You can use any kind of um, soft brushes that you have. As long as they're springy like that and they're soft, you can use them. So. I'm going to get out, I need a pouncer, and, oh, I'll use this pouncer, and probably this one, okay, that should do it for these. So look, I'm basically using three brushes for this entire project, um, and I have a little one and a big one, oh, I've got my liner brush, four, four brushes, there it is. So, I've got out my enamel paint. A lot of the times I will use, so this is enamel, this is enamel, or it has an E on the top. These are old brands. But a lot of times I will use the Folk Art um, multi-surface paint. It goes on plastic. It looks like this on the top. It goes on plastic, wood, glass, um, ceramics, paper, canvas, you name it. So. I'm just going to pick up, I'm going to show you guys on a little, on my paper here or on my board first. The first thing we're going to do. So, the um, 
the main basic for one stroke painting is double loading your brush. Basically with one stroke painting, you are going to shade, blend and highlight in one stroke. This is just um, a medium that I use when I paint on glass. It helps cure the paint. So I'm going to dip a corner in my light green and a corner in my dark green. It's thicket and I think citrus green. Yellow citron, okay. And I'm making this little runway here because I want to get a decent amount of paint up into my bristles. I'm putting in one corner and another corner. And I'm just working the paint into my brush. See that? So you want to have a decent amount of paint on your brush. And I double loaded it, which basically means half and half. So I have half one color and half the other color. And I'm going to show you on this paper a one stroke leaf just to start with and then I'll get painting on my glass. So you want to hold your brush upright. You want to put it on the chisel edge, standing straight up. And then you're going to push and stand up on the chisel edge again and then bring a stem in there. And there's your leaf. Now, yes, I've been doing it for a long time and I'm experienced and I can make it look easy. But if I pulled out my practice sheets from when I first started painting 15 years ago, you would see about 100 rows of these leaves as I painted and painted and painted. So you wanna hold your brush on an angle. You're standing it up on the chisel edge. Then you're gonna push down and go up and come back up on the chisel edge again. And then with the little corner of your brush, you're gonna push a stem. And that's it. So I do um, virtual paint parties. I have a free group for virtual paint parties and I do them once a month on Thursdays. If you wanna learn more painting techniques, I would love to teach you guys because I love sharing art from my heart. Um, I have to take my glasses off to paint. So I am going to add in a few of those one stroke leaves and it's the same thing. Put down on the chisel edge, push, and stand up. Put down on the chisel edge, push, and stand up. There we go. And it doesn't look like much now, but I tell all my students that you'll see as you go in and as you add more the, de the details and more elements to your project, um, you will definitely see where you're going with this. I'm putting these leaves on first because then I'm going to add my sunflowers and you want some of your leaves to be behind the sunflowers and some to be in front. So that's why I put those two on there and I'm going to put two more on here. Pick up a little bit more of my blending medium. Okay. And I'm going to stand on the chisel edge, push, and put in a little stem. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go in. I'm going to stand on the chisel edge, push, and put a little stem. Okay? So how are you guys liking this craft-a-thon so far? The Bust Creatives create a -thon. That's hard to say. So this morning we saw Chiquetta. She did that awesome shadow box. And now we just watched, I think her name was Barbara. She made that really cool album or that book, that memory book. That was really cool. I love how the, um, all that folded paint, all the folded paper just works out the right way. It's pretty, it's like a puzzle. It's pretty clever to me. So. If you haven't noticed, I am from New York, born and raised. I've lived here my whole life. Now I'm just going to add in a few stems and this we're going to get started because you want your stems also to be in the back. Yeah, so I've lived in Long Island my whole life. I'm in a pretty rural area. When, when I say I live in New York, people automatically think that New York is a one big metropolis. But no, we live on Long Island in a pretty rural area, and I like it a lot. So I don't plan on retiring here. So that's why I do this. 
I'm loving it. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Deborah. It's nice to meet you. Oh, Cheryl. Cheryl Brock. I'm glad. I'm glad you're enjoying it. It's cool, right? Especially these days. We're all looking for something else to do and keep us occupied and be a little creative. So here we are. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna wash this brush. When I, when you're working with enamel paint and you need to brush your brush and change colors, you want to dry it really, really well in paper towels. So if you're just coming on and you missed it, at the very beginning, um, since I'm painting on glass, when I paint on glass and even some hard plastics, the first thing I do is wipe down all of my um, surfaces with this regular 97 cent bottle of alcohol from the grocery store or the pharmacy. Or even maybe the dollar store too, I don't know. But, okay. So, now I'm gonna get out my pouncer. And I have two colors here. I have this burnt sienna and this black. And this brush is really cool, I like using it. You can use this pouncer brush for bushes, flowers in the distance, flower centers. Um, this is a great little brush to have. I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna pounce in for placement the centers of my sunflowers and where I'm gonna put them. Just pounce it around in a circle and put one up in here. This will be a different one and then one over here. And then I'm mixing a little bit of burnt sienna and black for this. But I'm going to go in and add highlights later too, so we'll put that aside. So now I got my brush nice and dry. And I'm going to do the same double loading that I did with my greens with my two yellows. So I put one corner. It's a little bit of a glass. Sorry, ladies. But this is school best yellow. And this is let me see, lemon custard. And I'm just getting my yellows nice up in here in my brush. So you want to have a nice amount of paint. You want your brush to move really smoothly on your surface. It shouldn't be dragging or pulling. And it will definitely on glass, but you still need to have a lot of paint or a decent amount of paint because you don't want, um, you want good coverage. So now I'm going to go in, and honestly, it may look a little different to you. This is the same stroke that we used for our leaf, but because of the color difference and a little bit of a different angle on my brush, it'll look different to you. It looks different to me too, but you'll see why it's different. So I am going to come over the center that I made a little bit, and this time I'm not putting my brush on an angle, but I'm using it square, and then I'm going to give a little turn and pull. And we want to pick up some of the browns and the black from the inside. So I'm going to lay down my brush. I'm going to push and pull. See? I'm just standing my brush up on the edge of the flower. I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to push and pull to a point. And that's what I'm going to do around my whole sunflower for the first group, or sometimes I like to call it the skirt. There may be a technical term for it, I don't know, but I'll go with skirt. And if you see, I completely turn my surface. Even if I'm painting on a 16 by 20 canvas, I'll be turning that surface every which way in order to get my stroke the way I want it. And that's okay. I'm doing these two glasses, you guys, because A, I can show you more, and B, as this paint sets a little bit, I can hop back and forth while I show you guys. I'm forever putting my brush in my mouth, and I'm forever getting paint on both of my shoulders. Because I'll put the brush in my mouth, and then I'll turn my head or look for something, I'll go get more paint, and then I'll have little dabs of paint on both my shoulders. That's why I wear this... Um, tie-dye shirt, so you can't really see when it's a mess with paint. I could have pounced both my 
flower centers at the same time, but I want my paint to be a little bit wet when I go to do my um, sunflower petals. This way it pulls out the dark colors a little bit. So you do the same thing. So stand my brush up and pull. Stand my brush up and pull. Now you see why we put down a couple of leaves to begin with because we want them to be in the back. We're going to add a lot more leaves. But to start with, we want a few of them in the back, so we put them down first. Plus, I'll show you something. When you're painting on glass, it's really cool to look at the glass from the inside. Oh, there's my husband. Hi, honey. Um, it's really cool to look at the glass from the inside. It's almost as pretty from the inside as it is from the outside. Now, I don't know if you guys can notice this or not, but I will show you something. See, I'm getting a little paint buildup on my brush. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to put it in my paper towel. I'm going to wipe it off because we want to always continue to have a nice edge on our brush. So that's it. I just wipe it off. I'm not putting it in water. I'm just wiping off the, the paint that kind of like gunks up. If you have any questions, you guys, I will be happy to answer. Put them in the comments. Um, and I'm going to add my second skirt on this glass. Put them in the comments, or after, I will definitely come back and check everything out and answer any questions you may have about my colors or my supplies or my technique, whatever it is you want to know. So I love to paint, and I love teaching others how to paint. And I thought this was a good um, start for some of you you want to learn or you just want to sit and relax and watch me paint. How's everyone's weather? We are having a beautiful, beautiful day here. I love it. The more sunshine, the better. I think that's also why I like, oops, painting sunflowers because they remind me of sunshine. And once again, I'm just, I'm doing the same exact stroke I did the first time. It's almost the same stroke as I used for the leaves. And I'm just going around and I'm adding more petals in between the first skirt of petals that I put. So it's basically just where you, where they met. And then you go in and you add the second line of petals. Now, that's not done. And like I said, rainy here. Oh, that's too bad. Um, we'll be adding more to that. And we're going to finish our center as well. Or fix our center. Well, not fix. Finish. we got to add the details and stuff. But I keep going back and forth. Like I said, because I want you guys to see um, how I'm doing it. And this way it gives time for the paint to set up on one glass while I paint the other. And plus, really, why would you just paint one glass? Wouldn't you want to paint two glasses? Wouldn't you want to have a set of these beautiful hand-painted one-stroke sunflower glasses? I know I would. So Anyway, so now we have these others down here to the side. And I'm going to go in. And these, I'm not going to pull as long. I want these to be a little smaller on the side. And I'm actually going to use one. The one on the other side is just going to be more of a bud. So same brush, same paint, same technique. But I'm making these short and stubby. This one doesn't have to be so big. doesn't have to be flaring out. And look, it's the same thing but it has a different look to it. And then I'm going back in and I'm adding in my in-betweens like that. So let me get you guys up here a little bit more. How's that? 
Okay, this way I can lay them down and you can, they'll still be in the, in the shot. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. Now this one, my petals came over a little bit, but that's okay. We're just gonna have some overlap. That's fine. It's funny, when I first started painting, I would put one flower over here, another flower over there. Um, they would be all over the place. Then I'd be like, why am I doing that? It looks so much more natural when you overlap. And that's why you also want to give your flowers a chance, the paint on some of your flower elements, to dry a little bit so you can overlap and see the difference. There's no rhyme or reason as to why every time I do a petal, I pick up paint, and then sometimes I skip a petal I'm, and just do two petals with the same paint. I don't know, there's no rhyme or reason to that. And on this side, I'm building up some paint again. I'm going to make this one a little bud. So I'm just going to add some few little petals like that towards the bottom on that one. Okay. So there we have that. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to pick up my pouncer again, which I love. And I'm carefully gonna go in and I'm going to pounce in my petals. We want our petals to get set back a little bit in our design. And it's okay if we pick up some yellow paint and pounce it into our center of our flower because I'm actually even gonna be adding more than that later. Then on the bud, we wanna go over the petals again. And then we have this one, this little guy over here in the corner where I'm just gonna pounce a little bit in there and see how it sets the petals back from the rose from the uh, sunflower bud and look in here this is what I was saying before about when you paint on glass it looks just as pretty from the inside sometimes as the outside now who wouldn't want to be drinking some iced tea or club soda or a glass of wine out of that beautiful glass isn't that pretty and we're not even close to being done yet we still have to do the leaves and some little twirls if I stand this up oh got paint on there oh look paint on there Take my favorite towel and wipe it right off. I don't use my hands to wipe it off because originally we washed, we wiped our glass with the alcohol so our glass wouldn't have any oils from our hands on it. So I'm gonna try to avoid going like this when I make a mistake. Because if I go like this with my hand, with my thumb or my pointer, I'm going to have to go back and try and fix it with that or go back over with the alcohol so I try to remind myself not to use my hands when I make a mistake on glass okay what do you guys think so far I'm gonna pick these up on my chain around here There we go. So, what do you guys think of these so far? Aren't they pretty? So if you want to learn more about painting some simple flowers and some one-stroke leaves, you can join me. I do um, lots of lives on my page, and I do a free paint party once a month on Thursdays in my free group. So I just love sharing art from my heart. So now I'm going to um, clean my brush again. And don't forget when we're using our brush when we're using enamel paints we don't want to have a lot of water so you want to really really dry it off well um, really really give it a nice squeeze and a little bit of a thank you Cheryl a little bit of a pinch and a nice rub and get it nice and dry okay 
I'm actually painting a set here. So I'm going to be painting these two glasses and this wine bottle to go with it. So you can put um, water in here, iced tea, and what a nice set it would be. Your two glasses and you want, and this is recycled. Actually, this wasn't, I think this was maple syrup. It wasn't even wine to begin with. But I liked the shape of the bottle, so I kept it, and I'm going to use it. Now I got my fingers all over it. I'll have to wipe it again. But I kept it, and I'm going to use it because how pretty is that? And then this with some matching flowers on it. So. And us, you know us crafters, we like us Michaels, and we like us some Hobby Lobby, but we love to recycle, too. I'm just seeing because I can see. Hi, Joyce. Joyce Simmons Weston, Sermons Weston, and Diana. Hi, it's nice to see you. Um, I can see comments easier on my phone, so I was just checking on my phone. I want to make sure nobody has any questions. So now I'm going to go back into my greens. I'm double loading it. I'm going to pick up some of this um, medium. It helps set the paint. It helps your brush flow when you're painting with enamel paints. And I'm double loading again my greens. And this whole entire time, you guys, I just used, so far I used two brushes. I used the pouncer and this little number, it's a number 10 um, glass brush. I don't get hung up in brushes and brush sizes because believe it or not, they are not universal across the board. One brand um, sizes their brushes differently than another brand. So I don't get caught up in that. When I um, teach and I do my virtual paint parties, I tell everyone to have a liner brush, a small flat brush, and then a large fat brush. This is a three quarter, a number 16, something that's maybe three quarters, a half an inch to three quarters inch wide. Not quite a what not quite an inch wide, that's too big sometimes unless you're base coating. Um, but something along the size of this. This is a number 16, so it's about a half an inch wide. And then this is a number 10. And these brushes, these are folk art brushes. But you want something, two different size flat brushes, and you always want a liner brush. A lot of painters use a round brush too in there. I will use a round brush from time to time, a small round brush for details. Um, but honestly, these are like the basis, basis of my painting. A large flat, a smaller flat, and a liner brush. And then my favorite paints, which are the folk art multi-surface paints, because they're nice and creamy and they move really well. Um, on your surfaces. So I use other paints too. So anyway, I'm gonna go in now and start adding some leaves. Now these leaves, clearly, will be over our petals. So pulling in leaves and adding some stems. And some of them can be skinny and some of them can be fat. Some of them will climb all the way up like that. Okay. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pull out a little vine and I'm going to add a few more filler flowers and like I said I'm using the same brush and the same colors but I just put the leaves in there a little bit smaller I don't put so much pressure and bring it out so far I'll put another one over here some people like to leave room up top for the lip line because um, technically these paints are not food safe. But when I do my designs, I just do them on one side and there's plenty of drinking space if you're concerned um, about the paint not being good for you. Sometimes when I paint on glass, and I'll show you guys this too, I will go back in, I will do my stems with um, the liner brush. I'll wait for my leaves to dry, and instead of how I showed you guys here before, where I did my leaf and then pulled the stem, 
I will go back in with the liner brush and do the stem. I like the way it comes better. So that's pretty much the one glass. I'm going to add a little bit of details, but I want them to dry first. And there it is from the inside. Isn't that pretty? This is another reason why I love painting on glass. So I'll use that one. I try, and it doesn't always happen, I try to keep my sets of glasses similar. Thank you. So again, I'm just adding some leaves. And you can just use these leaves on anything that you want to paint. Get yourself some scrap paper and a paintbrush and two different colors of paint, light green, dark green, some yellow maybe, um, and just practice row after row. You wanna stand your brush up, you wanna push it down, and you wanna come up to a point and then put in a little stem and just keep practicing. There's plenty of, including my own, there's plenty of tutorials um, for one stroke on YouTube. I love to paint. Even if, because um, I've made plenty of things that I, you know, at the end I'm like, mm, don't love that. But I've made plenty of, painted plenty of things that even if at the end I don't love it, I still, believe it or not, find it very relaxing. I call this my act two because I still work full time, um, but I'm hoping to start cutting back on that and being able to paint and create um, in my retirement. So, we're empty nesters now. My girls are uh, 27 and almost 25. The 25 year old lives in Costa Rica, which is a beautiful, beautiful country. We've been there twice. Um, she's there teaching English. And the 27 year old works for the local news station in Atlanta, Atlanta Fox 5. And so, yes, we are empty nesters, and I spend a lot of my time painting. Okay, we'll put that in there, and I'm going to get out my liner brush now. When you use a liner brush, you want it almost like a pencil. So, um, since I'm using enamel paints, I'm not going to use water. I'm going to put my brush in this medium, and you see me, like, twirling it out? I want to get a really nice point on it as I pull it out. Okay, then I'm going to pick up some of my light yellow. We don't want to go right in the pile. I always go into the side. And we're just going to take it and we're going to just add some highlights to the centers of our sunflowers. And the same thing again. You can use the back of the brush if you want, but that makes like, when you use the back of the brush, you can make basically make like perfect little dots. I'll show you that too. But when I'm doing the flower centers, I want them all different shapes and sizes, even though I'm pointing with the brush tip, they're still not perfectly round. See that? Let me just guys add a couple over here. Okay. We could take the back of our brush, which I like to do this sometimes, and add these little just dots around just to add a little bit more detail to your painting or your glass, or whatever it is you're working on. There's no rhyme or reason to where you put them. I've even put them down here on the um, base of the glass, on the stem. 
You just want to do like groupings of three wherever you think. Then I'll use that one so I can basically put these sort of in the same place. Obviously they won't be perfect. I'm not a robot. But they work. <clears throat> that one over there. And then off to the side up here. Okay. So here's our set of glasses. I'm going to go in now. I'm going to show you. I want to wipe them off a little bit. I'm going to do something on the bottoms too, and this is really cool. Now this is done from underneath the glass. Again, I'm taking my rubbing alcohol because I've been touching these all up. I'm not going to paint on the stem, so I'm holding it from the stem. Sometimes I'll even put my hand inside the glass. So I'm going to turn it upside down. And I'm going to get my flat brush again. I'm going to get it nice and dried off with my paper towel. Was oh, this bothering you guys? Let me move that a little bit. I might be distracting. I might as well check while I'm here. Thank you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Peace. What a beautiful name. Is that your real name? I have a friend whose last name is Sprinkle. Um, and I also say I always want to live on a street called like Rainbow or Peace or you know, something pleasant. Something like that. Sunshine Way. Wouldn't that be nice to live on Rainbow or Sunshine Way? How is that? How cool is that? So, all right, I'm going to get my greens again. Hope I'm not confusing y'all. But you know what? Because this is a craft-a-thon, you guys can come back and you can watch Chiquita's um, Shadow Box again. You can watch Barbara's album again. Um, after me is Jamie from, I think it's Creations 39. I'm not sure what she's doing, but I'm sure it'll be awesome because she's an amazing artist too. This is going on till 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Does somebody, I think I wrote down, who else? Jamie, um, then there's Soul of Art. There's going to be the Simply Flamazing Art. So you guys are in for such a treat for the rest of today and tomorrow. So I have my brush loaded. Okay, I'm going to go in and kind of, kind of put the line it up so my um, design is away from me and I'm going to start adding stripes now I like these to be a little bit darker so I'm going to pick up some more paint and I'm going to go in here okay I'm going to go again Now this almost makes, let me take my glasses off again. This almost makes what some of us creators call the buffalo check. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I'm done. So I put one down the middle and then I split either side on the other side. And because we double load our brush, you wanna be aware and conscious to keep your dark to the same side. See how I have my dark green is on this side every time I lay my brush down? If you don't do it, you don't do it, it's fine. Nobody's gonna notice. But I, oh, I try to be very conscious of keeping the dark to the same side. Now I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna pick up some more paint. I'm gonna turn my glass and I'm gonna do it the other way. And I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to pull. Pick up some more paint. 
keeping my dark to the same side. I'm gonna go off to the edge here. I'm gonna pull. And then one last time on the other side. Okay, now, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Doesn't that look cool? And there you go. Now these glasses, to set the paint and cure the paint, I say hand paint and hand wash. However, um, these glasses will go in the oven. These glasses will get baked on your enamel paint or even on your folk art paint. There's directions. So when you paint on glass that you're going to use and wash, you want to cure it in the oven. So they go in a cold oven on a pan. You put the oven on, uh, I think it's 350. When the oven gets to temperature, you set it for 30 minutes. When the 30 minutes goes off, Shut your oven, do not open it. Leave your oven closed and wait hours and hours and hours until everything completely cools down and then you can take your glassware out of the dishwasher. I mean, out of the dishwasher, out of the oven. I was going to say, I put my glasses in the dishwasher. I do that because sometimes I'm lazy and I just want to get stuff in the dishwasher. And secondly, I can repaint them, I can paint more, whatever. But if you want your stuff to last and last, you wanna put, you wanna hand wash and leave them on the counter upside down to dry. But I will mostly, actually, I'll hand paint on coffee mugs. My coffee mugs I put in the um, dishwasher all the time. But I'm not the one using the coffee mugs because I only drink iced coffee. So. Who else out there likes iced coffee? Because I love iced coffee. Even in the dead of winter, I will drink iced coffee. Which reminds me that I need a little sip of water. So I'll take one of these, see this cup? Um, I'll take one of these <clears throat> with iced coffee in the morning on my way to work and drink it in the car. Doesn't matter how cold it is. And we we have pretty cold winters here on Long Island. But yeah, love me iced coffee. It's rare that I will drink hot coffee. Ordinarily, if I want a hot beverage, I will drink cocoa or um, hot tea. Now this striping technique, y'all, you can use this on anything. You can make a really cute um, set of salt and pepper shakers just by, you know, buying those little glass ones at the Dollar Tree and painting them with these stripes and then going the opposite way. Maybe then going in and adding a couple of these dots and a few of the boxes. And you have a beautiful um, little gift or a set for your own table, depending on the colors you use. So yeah, these little stripes and this technique you can use for all kinds of stuff. Even so, if I didn't want to be inclined to paint um, sunflowers on the bottle, I can take this bottle and just go down and stripe the whole thing. If I really wanted to be particular about it, I'd tape it off, but I don't think I'll do that. I can just go down and add the stripes and add the stripes the opposite way and it still makes a beautiful set, but the stripes are quicker than going in and doing more florals. And maybe you didn't want that many florals. Okay. If I was going to add the dots to this though, I will say, I would probably 
go in and add the dots on the top. Like I would take my brush and I would add the dots here. It would add a lot more dimension and you wouldn't want the dots on the bottom of your glass. So, let me switch it again. So there, look at that. I have my two glasses and how cool are those bottoms? Isn't that pretty? And they basically, obviously they're not exactly the same, but they match. The dots that I added just add a little bit of something something to the glasses there. And then we fancy it. You can paint the stems if you want. I don't usually paint the stems. Um, but I do like adding some stuff to the bottom. You can even go into the bottom and add, I gotta keep these down, the little leaves. You can put some little leaves around the bottom. I like doing that because it's just really cute and it just adds something to the glass. Makes it a little bit unique. And they love them. Thank you, Cheryl. Her name is Michelle. Whose name is Michelle? Thank you. Ooh. I got a text. Sorry. So anyway, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this bottle yet. Maybe I'll do one sunflower and do the stripes around it. We'll see. But anyway, that is it for me today. Let me get you guys back up. Thank you for joining me. I hope you liked this little lesson. And like I said, I love teaching art from my heart. And um, I do lives twice a week on my page with little um, techniques and some painting stuff. And it was nice meeting you all. And enjoy the rest of your day. Jamie will be up at soon at some point. I'm ending a little bit early, sorry. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this and it was nice meeting you all. Everybody stay safe and sane wherever you are in the country. Um, and thanks for joining me. Bye guys.